Welcome to the Golf and Fitness Show, brought to you by PGA Tour Active. I'm your host, Corey Gregory. On today's show, we have two-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ, and four-time Gold Glove winner, the flying Hawaiian himself, Mr. Shane Victorino. What's good, Shane? Oh, man, I got zero complaints. Just enjoy, you know, enjoying that retired life. Just got back from beautiful... Uh, there in Scottsdale for the waste management, uh, you know, pro am and Hey, zero complaints. Just loving the game of golf now. How, so how is that golf game? And first I'm going to start right out the gate switch hitter growing up. Right. So what side are you teeing it up on? I don't even know. I think a lot of people don't know, you know, people, you know, like you just said that Corey, like people think I switch it all my life. You know, when I started switching it when I was 22 yeah. years old. Ooh, okay. Not many people know that. No, honestly, you know, so I think for me, I'm natural right-handed. I hit all the way basically till I was that age. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so I'm a, I, I'm a righty. Uh, I wish I could, you know, I've actually tried to hit a golf ball from the left side, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't very uh, successful. And even from the right side, it's not very successful, but it's got a lot of better chance. Well, so how, so from a baseball standpoint, like how long did that take? How, I mean, you must have put an immense amount of time to be able to, to be able to be a true switch hitter like you were. I read up on you until you had some injuries to where you stayed on one side of the plate, but did you just one day wake up and say, this is going to be a separator for me? No, I actually had a, a coach. It wasn't my decision. It was actually a coach in Gene Richards uh, in double A. I was in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And, you know, being a, 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 you know, kind of like a mentor and a father figure to me, he kind of said to me, you know, Shane, I feel like you're just, you know, comparable to basically all the other prospects that are ahead of you. Uh, you know, the names are like Reggie Abercrombie, Wilkin Ruan, uh, you know, Jason Repko, uh, you know, guys, like I said, that were on the totem pole, what they called ahead of me. And, you know, he said, you ever thought about switching? And I said, man, Gene, I did that a few years ago. It was the worst experience I've ever had. He goes, well, Shane, I think this can be like you use that word, the separator, that you can separate yourself when you go into these meetings. They can't be like, oh, he's just a right handed hitter. Hey, he's yeah. a switch hitter. He's working on it. You know, he could potentially figure it out. And, you know, from that day on, it was in 2002. It was uh, Jacksonville, Florida, in good old Wolfson Park, their, their old stadium. And we were doing, I remember we had, a, he handed me a sledgehammer and he had me grab the sledgehammer. He had me doing his one hand drills, basically like just creating the swing path, you know, sure. and what it would feel like to take the bat through the, through the zone. And I was like, <laughs> man, this is so awkward. You got a sledgehammer. Like you're giving me, and then I would do it with my top end and I would work on that path. And that kind of became a repetitive thing. And then to the point where we would actually start on the swing, he put the bat in my hand. And the funniest part about all this is that he told me when I started that journey in 2002, he said, Shane, it literally to become a good switch hitter and figure and actually feel like you're comfortable, it's going to take you three to five years. And if you look at my journey in 2005, I became a, you know, I won the AAA MVP, you know, and I became an, you know, big leaguer uh, later that September. So, you know, it's amazing you look back on stories like that, you know, that, that you can rely on people. So, yeah. And life changing and that consistency yes. you around it is what, like you said, it's those reps, it's those hours in three to yes. five years really could apply to anything. And has that applied to your golf game? Well, it's applied, but like I tell some of these guys, when you play too much golf, I think, you know, especially for someone like me that doesn't work at it, that's mm -hmm. still learning the physics, you know, the understanding of the swing path and, mm -hmm. you know, the baseball move as I know it and how I wanted to hit a baseball was to start, you know, basically over top, you know, never from the bottom up. So, you know, I always think about coming from top to bottom and, you know, when you're on a golf course, it's not the optimal, uh, you know, path that you want is the over the top, you know, you want that, take it out to right field, kind of second base approach to it up and under. And it hasn't been very successful, but being a good and having good and I, you know, hand eye coordination, I've been lucky enough to actually be able to, enjoy golf enough <laughs> one thing that i've always noticed when i've played golf with high level athletes is because they're so athletically gifted it's one of two things they're either they can always get back on plane to get the golf ball in a good position just because they're great athletes or they can't play at all right. i've never really seen a lot in the middle it's like i'm not saying they're you know a five handicap but i'm saying you can you they can go out and move it around are you kind of one of those guys that since you picked it up, like you can string together a few birdies here, always maybe part of bogey? Are you that type of golfer, Shane? Yes, that's definitely have, you know, myself, uh, you know, get away with the athleticism aspect to it, the hand-eye coordination, you know, manipulating, as you yeah. said, understanding the swing and some of the physics to it and, you know, using your hips and all that kind of aspect. So there's definitely that aspect. But, you know, as I said to some of the guys playing with, you know, in the pro-abs in the past and the pros, it's, it's like you guys, it's like any sport, you know, to perfect – 
And to be great at it, one, you have to be blessed with it. Let's be honest. I mean, I mean, that's the, the most important thing of it all is, you know, you're blessed with the opportunity to be that sort of athlete, to be able to do that. But second of it, the hours, the, 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 you know, when someone's sleeping on that, that, you know, through that practice or when somebody's, you know, not going to the beach as, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, my friends went to the beach and, hey, surf's up, let's go do that. Where I said, you know what, man, no way, I'm committed. I need to go to practice and, you know, hone in on my skills and my craft. So, you know, those are the things that separate those kind of guys. And, you know, it definitely helps, but it's not the answer. And, you know, I, I'm giving credit to the, you know, to the golfers themselves. And, you know, at that level, it's like you, they put in hours and hours that people don't realize. Yeah, no, for sure. What, um, so talk to me about being in front of a gallery. Uh, it sounds like you played in multiple pro am. So compare that to being up at a big at bat, right? You obviously the other one you spent way more time at, but does it give you, is there no butterflies in the at bat, no matter what the situation is? And is there more butterflies at the golf with, or I'm afraid I'm about to slice into the crowd. Like talk to me about that. <laughs> uh, 100% standing over a golf ball, you know, being uncomfortable. And I, and I use that word uncomfortable. I always talk about adrenaline, you know, ultimately yep. it's adrenaline that gets you going, the way you get stressed, why you panic, why you, it's nothing else, but you know, because of the magnitude of the moment. So yeah, standing over a golf ball, not really comfortable, not really understanding the, you know, the, the, the physics of the swing, or basically I know that, you know, I don't have the optimal golf swing, but I'm able to manipulate it. But yes, yeah, I've also done manipulation through a swing and basically hit it, you know, as I said, topped it or not hit the ball. Yeah. Correctly. But standing in front of 50,000, that was what it was all about. Like, you know, I mean, you know, knowing that, you know, whether it be a game one of the world series and a big at bat, and you know that the whole world's watching you because it's the world so series good. and, you know, no other baseball games going on. And that's the biggest sporting event going on around the world. It was just like growing up as a kid. So being on a golf course, being uncomfortable, you know, it, it is way different than standing in a batter's box or, you know, mm -hmm. standing out on a field of a no hitter or a perfect game going, please hit me the ball. I want to make the out for my teammate, you know, I so love that. it's definitely way different standing over a golf ball because again, the uncomfortableness is I haven't taken five thousand swings or, you yeah. know, millions, you know, swings on a golf club. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely way more uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, honestly, like to still get the butterflies right at your level, no matter yeah. what it is, especially when you're removed from your sport for a period of time, even just going out here in the pro-am, that brings back one, you're, you got the camaraderie of the guys, two, you've got the aspect of competition, you've got a little bit of butterflies, that's got to kind of feel good from a competitive standpoint to just even feel that a couple times a year again, right? Oh, that's what I long and that's what I miss about the game, you know, going yeah. back to baseball a little bit. But, you know, people always ask, what do you miss or what is it something? I said, that's it. That's, the, you know, the camaraderie, the, mm -hmm. the competitive, you know, the competitive. But again, that's why I got into golf. You know, I found yeah. something that, that brought out the competitiveness, you know, competitiveness in me to go out there to want to, you know, get that adrenaline going or get that mm -hmm. energy in me, you know, because, you know, sitting on the couch isn't always that, you know, fun and being retired. But, yep. yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 definitely night and day. Who's some of the best athletes, whether at baseball or other athletes that you played golf with that you, you know, you're teeing it up with and you're like, damn, this dude got game. You know, I, I got to say a lot of baseball players, man, these guys figure it out. You know, I played with Kinsler this year up at Gauzer, uh, you know, uh, in Idaho. And man, that dude came out smashing my former teammate, Pat Burrow. I mean, you okay. go to some of these, you know, golf events. Uh, you know, and you see guys like Mulder and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you get to play, I got to play in a towel event. I got to see Marty Fish, Tony Romo. I just feel like every sport has its, you know, has its stars. I mean, yeah. ultimately, you know, and, and to me, the best testament to all of it is when we get that opportunity to compete in a towel event or to play mm -hmm. in a, you know, it, like this year, Marty Fish won. I mean, you know, a tennis player. I mean, and if yeah. you think about the physics of a tennis swing, it's basically as smooth and as, as, as about as, you know, physics, you know, oriented to, to, and I go, okay, but don't get me wrong. Marty Fish is also out there practicing and trying to get better. He's not just showing up yeah. and saying, oh, I'm going to win, you know, a tournament like Tao. So I think every sport has their identity of, of guys mm -hmm. who are great athletes uh, who can go out and, and, and play and, and be great at a sport like golf. But again, you put those guys in an opportunity with the best in the world in golf. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's and a game. You see thing. what happens. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, John Smoltzmo was a great golfer. <laughs> Not to go and play on a you know senior tour event. What happened? I mean, you know, it's just yeah. it's, it's a different monster. That's when I go back to the fact of how much more time has someone put into their craft versus yeah. what I have. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, like oh, in ten years you'll be fifty. You keep working at it, you can go play on a senior tour. I'm like, I have no interest because those guys have also been playing since they were eight years old. Like it's yes. not even reality, you know.
yeah, but, yeah. You know, that's it's, it's, that's fun to cool. think about, though. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no, I have no. I like to do it for cordial for these kind yeah. of opportunities, you know, to mm-hmm. to make you know to get to meet people, uh, you know, and share good vibes and good energy, man. Yeah, it's so cool. So you've played some for some great franchises, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw them out, and I'd love to hear just a few words about it. Things that pop up um, when I say Philadelphia Phillies, what pops into mind? Man, the young kid that got an opportunity to you know to be able to retire and sit in in, in podcasts like this and actually you know make an impact on someone's life. I mean, you know, like mm-hmm. that's the kind of stuff when I think about Philadelphia. Hard nosed, you know, hardworking people. You know, the fans that. You know, they're going to let you have it. You know, if you don't Big go time. that night, they'll be waiting yeah. outside to let you know. And, you know, I respected that. And that's why I played the way I did every single night. So, you know, for me, I was able to go out there and achieve, you know, a lot of great things in that city. Yeah. So I went growing up, my dad wore a Phillies hat every day. The old like Mike Schmidt one, the maroon with oh, the white P. Like that was so, him, yeah, dude. Really. He yeah. like he looked like Super Mario. He like an Italian dude. Rocking the Phillies hat. That was just his jam. That, and he was a huge Eagles fan. So he was like Randall Cunningham, Mike yeah. Schmidt. That was like his jam. So even though I grew up a Steeler fan, that was stuff was around me big time. So I understand. Um, the Dodgers, man. Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Think about LA. You know, it, it really was. It was, you know, what stars were at the game every night. You know, what, 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 uh, you know, what, what was going on in LA around the city because it's, you know, kind of that city. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, I loved it. I was, you know, they, you know, they were the team that gave me my opportunity as an 18 year old kid. They drafted me out of high school. Uh, you know, so when I think about them, I also think about that, that journey that, you know, started yeah. with them and some, you know, some scout by the name of Hank Jones coming to Maui and, uh, or someone seeing me and, and really putting a footprint on me for me to be that little kid that grew up on an island that got an opportunity to do something different. That's what I think about LA. Yeah. And LA not being that far from Hawaii. So oh, it's yeah. like what a lot of people in the East Coast that have never traveled out there don't realize like people in California go to Hawaii often because it's not uh, as far as it is for us to go there. And I'm fortunate enough to been be there a couple of times. It's amazing. So growing up on the island, although everyone knows everybody, I'm sure – it had to be um, had to be cool to be able to then go to your first destination, be in LA. Like, I mean, that's like s- some storybook stuff, kind of. It was. It was pretty cool, man. It was. It was pretty like, wow. You know, it's the big city, the bright lights. Uh, you know, yeah. it's LA. Yeah. So good, uh, Boston. I-, I love Fenway, man. I love Fenway. It was. A, it was. Uh, you know, I used the word in a you know one of my biggest hits there, and I said it was the cathedral of baseball, and it really is. Facts. You know, the- significance of it the you know the history behind it and you know Wrigley's another one that you know when you yeah. really look in the history of baseball the rest of those stadiums you know like like the like New York and you know mm-hmm. uh, veteran stadium in Philly like they all got torn down and got rebuilt yeah. with these beautiful state-of-the-art places so you know when I got to be at Fenway Park and for me is that like, it took me back to as a little kid growing up and always reading in books about the green monster like that was yeah. always in a book like at some point through my childhood when it, it dealt with baseball so to actually be there and to actually, you know, hit a grand slam in the postseason oh. on the wall. And, like, it's, yeah, like you said, it becomes <laughs> so real. Like, you know, and, yeah. and not only that, if we ultimately, Corey, think about what happened that year in 13, you know, oh. with the, bombing, uh, the marathon, you know, I always think about Boston Strong because it's something yeah. that, you know, will always be etched in me. Uh, you know, I was part of a team that brought a city back to life, uh, not just a city, basically the whole world because whole world. everybody was on edge. You know, what just mm-hmm. happened, all parts of the world, run this magnificent Boston marathon. And in a matter of seconds, the whole world was shaken. So yeah. it was a pretty cool one to do with the guys that I did, but you know, ultimately winning two championships in two great cities. Don't forget. Oh. About <laughs> yeah, no, I got, I got one more for you. Uh, sure. Well, I want to talk about, so my yeah. last baseball game I've been to previous to the pandemic, me and my family sat in the green monster uh, for a game and somebody hit a home run over top of our heads. It was for the other team, but re- it was, it was a surreal experience. And, and once again, something I always looked up to as a kid and was like, my gosh, like it would be unbelievable. Cause you know, I grew up in a really small town, so my, my family never traveled or did things right. like that. And it just wasn't kind of how we operated. And so as an adult, being able to go have experiences like that, you're walking up to the park and you hear like, <laughs> you know, 
uh, you sit in the monster. You sit in the monster. I'm like, dude, this is fucking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I was so hyped, dude. So I couldn't imagine running out, you know, as a player, hitting a hit like that. Um, that's those are things that'll be etched in your mind till you till you close it down one day, right? I mean, that's uh, yeah, I mean, till till my death, I don't think it'll ever leave me. I mean, yeah, you know, again, it's just you know, it's it's. It's not just dreams. It was reality. I think, Corey. Yes. Like it, 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 you know, I lived the moment, and these are things that, you know, that it's, you know, I, 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 I someone's, you know, told me one day, like, do you realize that you hit some of the most iconic home runs in in Major League, you know, postseason history? And I was like, no, because it's just another, you know, I saw it as just another at bat. Like it yeah. wasn't that big moment. You know, it wasn't yeah, that yeah. like, oh my god, this is it. Like this is where you make or break yourself. It was like. Dude, I'm a little boy that grew up in the middle of the ocean <laughs> in the most isolated place in the world, you know, sure. where how did I come off that rock to be able to stand in a batter's box to be in that moment? Like, dude, what is there to be nervous about other than yeah. do your best like your parents taught you as a kid, you yep. know, give it 100 percent. And if you fail, it's part of life. We fail yeah. more in life than we succeed. I mean, it's plain and simple. And a lot of times that and so that's why when those moments happen, it was so calming to me. It's like. Dude, this is what you've done all your life. Like compete. You're a gamer, Shane. You're a gamer. You fail. You win, yeah. you win. You know, yeah. you win, you you'll be remembered forever. You lose, it's okay. A lot of people yeah. are gonna lose, you know, and they're gonna, you know, they're different than the next guy. I mean that expectation. Or I made the last out to end a World Series. You know, well, think about that one in two thousand nine. Yeah. How many people would bounce back from that? That kind of yeah, yeah. you know? I did, I think, you know. I think that expectation though, because baseball is such a reactionary sport. Yeah. It's like if your brain gets gets involved in that moment and you're just not doing what you're trained to do, that is when you have less of an opportunity to be successful. So yeah. that calming moment or in your mind is everything. So yeah. I think the way that I read about Gary Player, who's like one of my idols, he was my first guest on this show, yeah. by the way, which was amazing. Awesome. And he said, you know, I'm over these big put- putts for a hundred thousand dollars that, you know, as a kid, I'm poor from New Zealand or I'm sorry, from South Africa. And I'm not even supposed to be here really. So it's like, I, this is the same putt. My mom should be able to make this putt. Like why? And I, and I love that kind of um, vibe because I think more people need to just hear that, um, practice it. It's important, man. It is. I mean, it's cause it's in life. I mean, of course it's not just, sports. Yes. I mean, we always tie it into sports. Like that's the part where I always try to stop in segments. It's like, yes, my platform was baseball. But, like, what I've done in life, like, I take that into my life lessons now. I take it into meetings as a business, you know, looking at entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. stuff. Like, you know, at the end of the day, be a team. Like, yes, there's always going to be one person that's going to come out, which is an MVP, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, whatever that person is. But if 24 other, uh, uh, you know, 24 other guys can can achieve the achievable, then we all win. So, yes, it might be giving up an at-bat or giving up that, you know, that that big moment where, like, yeah, I want to be the hero, but, you know what, it calls for me to butt or it calls for me to move the runner over. Like, you know, and I think that's, like, in life lessons. Like, if you can step out of sometimes your own way and, like, just look at yourself and stop looking at yourself and go, bro, how can I make, or girl, like, how can I make that next person and give them a better opportunity in life than I do. You know, a slogan mm-hmm. my parents always told me as a kid, and not only just my parents, my family, was if you think you got it bad, there's always someone out there that's got it way worse. And, like, I always think about that. Another thing in, in big moments, like, Fact. dude, there's someone out there that has it way worse. Like, my life's falling in my lap right now. But, dude, yeah, there's some guy on the street that's got no home, no one to yeah. love him, no one to pick up a phone call to, you know, say, hey, bro, I just want to say hi. You know, so I think that's the slogan that, that helps you in life. Perspective. It's yeah, everything. Um, what's your favorite club in the bag, man? Where's the, cause just like anything else, you, you go up to a shot, whether it's a, a wedge in or your driver, like what's the one you pick up and you know, like 90% of the time I got this and everyone has that. I love an eight iron. I think if I can get into it within an eight iron, which is probably about 150 to 165, somewhere there. Yep. It's money. We're, we're in a good spot. Yeah. Like that, <laughs> I, I love my eight iron. I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it's the number eight again, you know, which was my number yeah, yeah. in my career. That, I didn't even think about that, but now that I'm saying it, I'm like, Might that's be. the number that I like going to when I, you know, we look on a course and go, okay, whether it be hitting a hybrid here or hitting a, you know, four iron off the tee instead of a driver to put me into an, you know, an eight iron range. But that's another part of my learning the game of golf. It's crazy how you, you said, 
try to go to your one club that your money with. <laughs> Everyone has it. And I don't, you know, and a lot of people don't even think that way. They just no. operate. I'm the yeah. same way. Like I get out there and I'm like, I get a sand wedge in. I just know this yeah. thing's dropping. I could throw a dart with it, you know? <laughs> yep. And it, it, and that's, uh, that's just, but it could be, Hey, you're a winner with eight. So yeah. you, maybe that's just what you need. No, see, I don't know. Not that you said it. <laughs> and then I just put two and two together. I was like, oh, there goes that number eight again in my life. You know, it's, yep. uh, it's so good. Yep. It's so good. Uh, what about the angels? What comes to mind? An opportunity to win another playoff. Like when I went there, yep. you know, and again, the second thing was being close to my family, you know, getting okay. an opportunity, my family being on the West coast and, you know, towards the end of my career. Uh, and I also knew what was there. And mm -hmm. I always longed to play with a guy that I could say was just better than every other person in the room. And that was my trout. Like I wanted yeah. to play alongside this kid. I was like, you Such know, he grew up, he's outside of Philly. You know, he's a Philly kid at heart. And I remember watching, we played them. We went to Boston, or Boston went to Anaheim about two weeks before. And we played them, and they absolutely smashed us. And I remember leaving, and when all the speculation trades started happening, I called my agent. I said, you know, I don't know if this is all true, but if it is, you know, I would love for them to look at me at sending me to Anaheim because when we played them two weeks ago, I think they're a playoff team. Mm -hmm. And I said, not only that, I'd love to play alongside, you know, not only Mike and Albert was Albert, there, right? I yeah. <laughs> I get to play along beside these two, two of the greatest players of all time and kind of go to work with them every day. I'm in. And, you know, next thing, less than 24 hours later, you know, we got a call back and said, you know, the angels are interested. Would you go there? I said, yeah. And, That's you know, cool. next thing you know, what, I was off to Anaheim. But yeah, those are the two things I remember through the process when I think about Anaheim, uh, mm -hmm. being close to home and, you know, getting an opportunity to play with, two of the greatest players in, you know, I think in our generation. Uh, I would agree with that. Talk about their prep. What, what preparation you had been obviously a vet for years at this point, but did you pick up anything from either the young or the old G uh, being pull, pull host, like the preparation, the way they operated, was there anything that stood out that was similar or different, you know, from you being there? Albert was work ethic, meaning like Trout was too, but different work ethic. Like okay. we were old school. We were more, mm -hmm. You know, we love to, you know, get there at, you know, 11 o'clock and stay, you know, for a while and grind. Mike was the, the just talented, works, you know, mm -hmm. works hard. But yeah, you can see a God-given talent that it doesn't have to, you know, take that extra effort to fine-tune the craft. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, where Albert was older, he's still trying, you know, he's, he's keeping his craft going. He wasn't that young Albert I, like I saw in, 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 in obviously in St. Louis. And yeah. hey, I get it. It's what it was. I mean, that guy's still the greatest of all time, but mm -hmm. you know, wear and tear on his body and what he was and all the, you know, games that he did log in St. Louis, it, it catches up to all of us. And, you know, I saw that, but it was still a work ethic to be the greatest. It yeah. wasn't like, okay, my body's not as, as functional or, or I got to work harder to go out there and play on a, a at a top level it was still the same work ethic mm -hmm. and mike was so you know going back to mike it was just it was spooky Corey. like i bet like, <laughs> like, <laughs> bro i gotta do four hours worth of work you can do an hour's worth of work it's just, <laughs> freak show yeah like freakish like and that's the part where i was like man there's no way and i tell this story to any human being when i talk about mike trout it was we were in we were in contention. We were in Texas, mm -hmm. and we needed a big hit. And it was always his. I mean, big hits to him was nothing. But I was just remember, going, okay, we got Trout leading off. What is this dude going to do? And he hit a C to right center for a triple, and he dove into third with this like energy that I've never seen. And like yeah. I felt it in the dugout, and I was like, "Holy dude, this is spooky." Well, we ended up losing the game. We didn't win, so we got eliminated. But yeah. we came into the clubhouse. His locker was next to mine. And I said, Mike, I want to tell you one thing. I said, you know, you grew up Philly. You know, you grew up and you said as a 16-year-old kid, you told me the story about, you know, us winning World Series and you and your friends going down Broad Street. So and, cool. You know, having a you know, time of your life as a 16-year-old kid. I said, you know, I played with a lot of great players in my career, you know, and, you know, you've been a fan of some of these guys. And I said, actually, if you turn around right there, the guy behind you, which was Albert, I said, that's probably one of the greatest. But I've honestly longed to play with a dude that I can say, Mike, how are you better 
than every other person Player. on this field, bro. Like, you know what I mean? It was, yeah, it was a joke. And again, I'm not trying to just, you know, <clears throat> and not only because of that, the person that he was, you know, he's the, continued to prove it. I mean, it's just the, obvious the guy that he is though. Ultimately, if you think about baseball, like the person yeah. that he is, like, you know, we were in Chicago one game and we all were like, after our round, we we're like, where the heck's Mike? Like, you no, know, he's not picking up balls. And we look over and he's literally signing an autograph for a kid that had disability and, you know, and, and what I'm trying to get at is my point was, and we all kind of wore him out because we were like, ah, get over here. And then we realized where he was going. And yeah. then we all realized, like, dude, look at this dude. He's going out of his way to He's go real. make kids day. Yeah, like he was real. And so, it, it, you know, people talk about the baseball accolade of this dude. Like, I got to see a side of that guy like that, you know, it, and why I get, well, sometimes, you know, people are like, well, why is he not on every ad or where he's not? Because he's ground rooted, he's never wanted to get outside of his his comfort zone, mm-hmm. and you know, hey, he's the greatest guy. On, you know, let him be the greatest player on the field, man. Yeah, well, yeah, and he's displayed it just year after year. And I, I had a um a relationship with Bryce Harper kind of early in his career. From my old business, um, was a supplement business called Muscle Farm, and so as he was coming, he was owning the miners for a short period of time. Yeah. But we used to work back and forth a little bit, and so it was always interesting to me to see them two kind of like be compared and it was good for Bryce because he came up and lived up to the hype. Right. And then, you know, Mike comes not out of nowhere for baseball guys. They, they knew he was coming, but then to have these two stars at the same time around the same age is important for the game. And then for Bryce to go sign in Philly yeah. was, was a bit, was a big deal. So it, Very, I think it's great for the sport. Yes. No, it's, it's, it's definitely fun to see the mode. I, I, it's crazy to see, like you said, two two kids come along at the same time, you know, reaching the pinnacle of their game. Um, and it's hard. You know, you look back in generations. I mean, what kind of generation, you know, maybe Griffey and Jeter through their era, you know, yep. you look at – it's hard. I mean, it's really hard to find that kind of staples in the game where you just go, man, this dude, you're in, you're out. It's just, you know, like Albert 10, 15 years ago when he was yeah. in St. Louis. I mean, you knew Albert was putting up A, B, C, and D. and. You know, to see him keep accomplishing those kind of goals, it's 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 crazy what baseball and, and where the sport is going, man. Yeah. Who's your favorite golfer um, to watch, whether it's on TV, in person? Like, who's somebody that you really look forward to or a couple pros that, that excite you? Tiger Woods has always been. And when I say that is because of the, you know, people say, well, he's the greatest. It's easy to like the greatest, you know. I always felt like there was a part of him at some point in his life where adversity faced him. And to be able to come a, come and get out of and face adversity full face, I mean, as he did, you know, with everything that, you know, went <laughs> yeah. public and yada, yada, yep. yada, to come back and win the Masters. Amazing. I told my wife, I said, babe, yes, people will, you know, haunt him for what, you know, that, 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 you know, whatever he wants to be known for. But as an athlete, to be Jeez. able to come – True, and basically get drunk through the trenches, in my opinion, and to yeah, achieve absolutely. what he was able to achieve. And why I always said why I love Tiger Woods because he was the ultimate winner. It wasn't about anything else but winning. Like, and at our level, that's where it becomes. I mean, you need yeah. to be, you know, you're there to win. It's your profession, it's your career. You want to be the best at it. So, Tiger Woods was one. Of course, he was, you know, through my era, but, <clears throat> you know, looking now uh, in these younger kids, man, there's so many. Uh, but, I love JT, man. JT is yeah. just, I feel like he's got that same, you know, tenacious, you know, he's got some adversity he's facing right now, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with what had happened. And the only reason I bring it up because I was in Maui, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, it was near and dear to me because it's, you know, it happened there, and you know, and the sadness of, you know, the scrutiny he's facing. But ultimately, you know, to see a guy like that with tenaciousness and that desire and the respect, you know, to, to be who he is. I've always been a JT fan. That's cool. Back to yeah. Tiger, um, I interviewed Tiger before and asked him that the question. I couldn't even get it out of my mouth. Like, why does Tiger Woods get out of bed and, and it is uh, winning? Question answered. Like, it is it, the, the sun sets and shines and that is it, bro. It is like at a level, and I don't know if you've been around him before or watched him in person, but it's like at a level that is so eerily like – uh, just next level that you just know you're around greatness. It, it's yeah. just what it is, dude. And I, I, I freaking, I, I loved it. Yeah, I got to hang out with him at Tiger Jam here in Vegas, and we got to go spend some spare time. And 
That's I awesome. love to ask him this question. And I said, Tiger, you know, as a father to a son, I want to know what is one thing that I can take away from what you and your dad and that relationship that everybody seems to say was such a haunted, you know, and people have this myth about it that your dad yeah. was so hard on you. And he said, Shane, my dad made everything about a game. He made everything a competition. So when I felt like I was out there, whether it be practicing in my eyes, I mm-hmm. felt like I was just playing a game against my father and competing. And that's when I was like, I am taking this away. Oh. From a relationship of how a father created greatness in his son. Yes. You know, again, yes, he was born with it. He was blessed with it, but he had to fine tune it. But a father, when he said that my father made everything a game and made everything a competition. So I didn't think it was practice. I was like, dude, Love that it. is an unbelievable. I mean, it's such an easy concept. If you think about yeah. it, I mean, if you went out every day with your father as a kid and said, all right, you wanted to play golf or you wanted to play catch. And you said, okay, son, let's make a, who can catch 10, 10, 10 balls first. Sure. It's a you're trying to compete. So it was such an interesting philosophy. And I basically try to instill that in myself. When I look at my son, it's like, I don't want to go out and play catch with him. Like I yeah. want to make it some kind of fun competitiveness where he doesn't realize it, but by making it competitive or go catch fly balls and run and sprint to go catch it and try to catch yeah. it. Like you're doing so many different tangibles in one element rather than, okay, son, here's, here's the ball. Let me throw it to you. Catch it. Yeah. Back to that, you know, yeah. so it was yeah, something I, that, you know, it taught me a lot about what Tiger Woods and why he was probably able to reach greatness the way he did, you know, constantly, constantly yeah. competing since he was probably out of the womb, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. It was and a I pretty tried- cool little, yeah. I was really tickled by, I was like, man, this is pretty cool that, you know, Tiger, that, that's, that was kind of, you know, his answer about, you know, his and his dad's relationship from a, from a, you know, father and son relationship and how it could help me to, you know, guide my child. And not only his public adversity, but the adversity from the injury standpoint, the guy's got to fuse back Shane, like as an athlete that had, has had to rotate a million times, like, I don't know if people really understand what that means to then continue on to win masters at that level. Not even all the other stuff aside, like that people used to make fun. All those glute. He's talking about his glutes being act- like that's as an athlete, that's like real stuff. It does not fire when you have levels of injuries like that. And so the respect all encompassed, I'm the same way. Like, the dude's a G and I, I almost wanted to cry when the dude won, you know what I mean? It was like unbelievable. I think for not only sports fans, but people that actually understand a level of what, you know, when you're injured to that level it is not easy to come back from that. Not at all. I mean, like you said, it's, it's physical is everything. I mean, mental is one, but to, yeah. to not be able to go out there at the physical level of a hundred percent is almost like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's everything. It's, it's actually, it's, Sometimes I tell people it's more important than the mental because if you're physically, you know, in pain, you're mentally burnt because you know that you're, you you can't physically or, 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 you know, go out there ultimately to try to like, you know, have your body function correctly. It's just not mm-hmm. possible. And then it grinds on you mentally because you're frustrated. You mm-hmm. know, you're trying to run a sprint and you can't because your calf's sore or like for him, he did tell me that he basically said, he did say that too. He goes, and that was another question. I said, how are you playing golf at this level? And he said, Basically, you have to recreate a swing chain. And I was like, hmm. So how do you just recreate your swing? Like, he goes, yeah. yes, I don't rotate on my lower half. My back doesn't rotate. It, it's more of my my upper body and my torso and how I'm like, dude, like, yeah, you're, whoa, what? You yeah, know, like, I did. <laughs> it, it was confusing to me. I just was like, dude, this is even more greatness. Like, you basically, yeah. you basically recreated yourself. <laughs> that, yeah, a thousand I mean, percent. True. I mean, you have to, you know? Wow. He can't rotate on the lower half. I mean, he's pinned together. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So we talked a little bit this before we got on air. Are you training or doing any working out based around to make your golf game better? What's like the um kind of setup for your training? You say you're getting back into it or you've been talking about it? Kind of. I've been talking more than doing. I promise. Ah. You like we said a little bit before, I've yeah. probably been that typical, maybe not athlete that, you know, when I got done, you know, all the grinding I did in my career, I just, I didn't want to see a gym. I didn't want to see a weight room. You know, I, I obviously golf. Uh, I do a little bit of that, but it doesn't entitle, you know, the fitness that I should. And, 
you know, I think it is getting to that point. I just turned 40 years old, Corey. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was telling you, you know, earlier, like we were talking about is I can feel it when I do go out on a golf course. And for example, yesterday at the, you know, uh, the pro-am, I had to walk 18 holes. And, a whole and different ball game. Know, yeah, a whole different ball game. And I was like, you know, for about after the ninth hole, I was like, Ooh, man, my, you know, I can feel my feet feeling differently. The calves are starting mm -hmm. to get sore. Then, you know, the body started to feel different. The golf swing started to feel different. I was like, yeah. these, dudes, these dudes do it another three days, you know, at the highest level. You know, it's the whole – but I think I do a lot more walking than those do. They do a lot of straight walking because their balls were in the middle of the fairway. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot more, you know, Same. zigzag and finding my ways on, on certain yeah. hills that I shouldn't be. But, you know, I, I, I think for me it's, it's something I will definitely have to start in 2021 is definitely, yeah. you know, the functionality of the body because it's starting to, you know – Kind of like you said in your story, you know, you got to the point where it's like, man, I got to do something. I can't just stop yeah. and not do anything. And, you yeah. know, it's getting there. My wife wears me out every day about not, you know, being physically, you know, active. So I think in 2021, I will de there, there will definitely be a different shade. I think I got you, player. I think we were supposed to meet. I got you. <laughs> So, hey, I want, I want to be respectful of the time. It was awesome having you on the show, Shane. I think that great, great positive vibes, man, which is what I expected only from seeing you on TV, but exactly what I expected. And so congratulations on an amazing career. Um, enjoy retired life. Get that handicap lower. And uh, where can everybody find you on social media? Hey, uh, my Instagram's at Shane Victorino. My Twitter's the same. Uh, you know, other than that, I try not to do, you know, I'm public a little bit, but, you know, I've always believed in, you know, my life is my life. I want to keep it as private as I can. But yet, I love to show the fun side of things in life that I get to do because of, you know, working hard and, and you know, all the life lessons that were taught to me as a kid about sure. work ethic and, you know, all coming full hold now. So I appreciate the time, Corey. It means a lot. Uh, you know, I'm loving golf and uh, hopefully we'll do more of these down the road. Absolutely. He's the flying Hawaiian. I'm your boy, Corey G. This is the Golf and Fitness Show. Make sure you share with all your friends and we are out.